Hey folks, Joseph A. Savori here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Varsity Blues, the 1999 film about an American high school football team set in a small town, which is actually a battle between their team and an overbearing but arrogant coach. It stars James Vanderbeek from the TV show Dawson's Creek. Yeah, this was his breakthrough role long before he went on to do TV, other TV shows like Don't Trust to Be in, in Apartment 23 and that recent CBS show. Also starring in the film is John Boyd, a legendary actor who went on to do films such as Midnight Cowboy, Enemy of the State, Anaconda, and many others that he went on. Along with Paul Walker, who just recently passed away yeah, in 2013, but it's always, who's always been best known for his roles in the Fast and the Furious films, but went on to do other films like Meet the Deedles, and Into the Blue, and all his other ones. In fact, he was also best known for his, his role in the TV show Frog back in the 80s. Uh, it's a pretty rare show, but it came on NBC a long time ago. Amy Smart went on to do the film Road Trip, as well as Crank and Rat Race. Eileen Lauder. Um, Scott Kahn, who went on to do the TV show of a Wi-Fi role, the remake. And Ron Lester, who is best known for his role as Spaz in the movie Good Burger. Also appeared in, in all the sketches of Good Burger on all that. Yeah. It's written by W. Peter If, and it's produced and directed by Brian Robbins, who also did the film Good Burger, and as well as many other films that followed. Yeah, that includes all the Eddie Murphy movies and and one of producing all these Fred films, you know, so on and so forth. The movie begins set in West Canaan, Texas. An intelligent, gifted backup quarterback for the West Canaan High School football team named Jonathan Mox Moxon, who's played by James Vanderbeek, who, despite it being so popular at school, making friendships with other players and has a smart and sassy girlfriend named Joyce Harbour, who's played by Amy Smart, Marx is having a very hard time with his life. He wants to leave Texas in order to attend at Brown University, but in order to do that, he has to deal with his, his over-obsessed father, you know, since he loves football so much, played by Thomas F. Duffy, and wants him to play on the team with a verbally abusive a very uh, overbearing legendary coach named Bud Kilmer was played by John Boyd and prior to this uh, he's he's been coaching for over 40 years winning two state titles and 22 district championships so this season since this was part of his authority was to win at all costs he wanted them to win before something goes completely wrong but that's what happened when their star quarterback named Lance Harbert, who's played by Paul Walker, had all of a sudden having an injured knee and ends up in the hospital for only a few weeks, only to find out that he had some massive amount of scar tissue left inside his knee. So once Mox was very shocked about all of this, Kilmer decided to hire him as a replacement to Lance by becoming the star captain and the quarterback. Um, so during Marx's life, he decided to train for the team with his friends in order to win this season to earn their championships. So he had to deal with his father a lot and had to fight with Kilmer as, as it follows. And not be able to have a strong feeling by winning also screams with his own father by saying he doesn't want his life. So he doesn't want to be part of this. Mox does still respect and obeys Kilmer by his own rules, but when Kilmer has a word that Mox has won a full scholarship to Brown, 
Hilmer had threatened Mox that he continued to disobey and disrespect him by having Mox's transcripts to be reversed by the decision of his own scholarship. But before all of this had happened, though, you know, Mox's new life begins when when he had to deal with with Lance's beautiful blonde cheerleading girlfriend named Darcy Sears, who's played by Ali Lauder. And she actually just seduces him with a whipped cream bikini yeah, underneath her naked body. But this was actually part of the scene that was in the movie that actually worked pretty well. Darcy herself wanted to be able to marry Lance in order to escape a small town life. Once uh, Kilmer's lack of concern for players have continued, resulting in the dramatic collapse of Billy Bob, who's played by Ron Lester, an overweight friend of, of Fox, who actually had a head injury you know, during that first play. And that's why he was having some problems keeping his head straight. He also ordered uh, Charles Treeter, you know, played by Scott Kahn, happens to be a friend of Mox also, to replace him. He refuses, so this whole thing was a setup. So that's when the Kilmer loses control and attacks him until he finally leaves and decided to continue the game without him. And once Mox to work with Lance becoming the coach, you know, coaching them together, they finally succeeded and finally won the championship of the game. So everything seems a whole lot better now than it was. And I really did enjoy this movie. You know, I think this was definitely right up there with many other football movies that followed even before this. You know, like uh, The Longest Yard, you know, All the Right Moves, you know, Earth Dallas 40, and many others. But this was also the beginning before other films like Friday Night Lights, Any Given Sunday, and all those other movies came along. But this one, but for this coming of age, uh, for this coming of age uh, sports drama, it actually worked. Now, it had a lot of comedy, it had a lot of references in the film. It's also comedy too. Now, I, I thought Billy Bob, you know, who was played by Ron Lester, had had a scene stealing role in many of the scenes that he's been in because this is coming from the guy who played Spaz and Gooper you know, who often makes all these random noises you know, like grunting and screaming and, and all that stuff <laughs> you know, so he doesn't talk in, in, so he doesn't talk in, in the sketches and the movies and stuff but he was really you know, he was really good in this film I was a bit surprised that, you know, because despite of his weight, you know, he, he weighed like over 500 pounds, you know, during this filming of the movie. He was almost about to lose half of the weight. And and during recent years, uh, he's already lost like 190 pounds. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's incredibly thin now, so he's, he's a lot, he's a whole lot different than he was than he was. So he's a whole lot different now than he was back then in the movies. So, so it's very interesting that he lost a lot amount of weight going through a lot of gas bypass surgeries and everything so in order to keep his health safe you know, as it goes. Because I would imagine you know, how this is going to turn out you know, as years follow. But he had a lot of memorable scenes in the film where he started throwing up you know, inside the washing machine you know, after he drank so many beers you know, during that game. He started eating a lot. Everything. James Vanderbeek was actually very good in the film you know, considering that this was his breakthrough role you know, after being in the TV series Dawson's Creek and many others that followed. So, yeah. That this was the biggest challenge even for his career. In fact he won the MTV Movie Awards for his performance, as well as the Teen Choice Awards back in 1999. But they sure had a lot of big casts in this movie who went on to become very famous, um, including Amy Smart and Eileen Lauder, which, believe it or not, turned out to be the uh, real-life roommates, you know, before they became extremely popular with all these movies that they've been in. So I could see how... <laughs> How, how that actually works. 
John Boyd was really excellent in this movie as well as the, the overbearing coach. He really took the toughest role that I never thought I would see. But it worked pretty well. You know, coming from all the films he's been in, you know, this was definitely his juiciest role I've ever saw in his career. And Paul Walker was amazing in the film as well. Just such a shame that you know, he's no longer with us now. You know, it's after all these years, but this was actually his best work. You know, right up there with um, Eight Below and Joy Ride too. You know, Joy Ride was a great film that I like. It's just such a shame that he's, you know, after all these years, that, you know, by making successful hits with all the Fast and the Furious movies, that he's no longer with us. Yeah. But he'll always be remembered, no matter what. Yeah, and Scott Kahn, their, you know, another friend of his, was, was great. You know, there was that famous scene where, <laughs> where he actually has one guy holding the flower pot on his head and you know, in order for not to drop it and he has a baseball bat and he's about to hit him straight into the nuts <laughs> and he did until he <laughs> until he dropped the flower pot part of that yeah that that was a famous scene that they actually <laughs> once have been many of the YouTube videos if for those who've seen that see. it, it's really funny uh, I also love that line in the movie where, <laughs> you know, where James Vanderbeek was telling us that famous line in the film, I don't want your life. It was also shown in a Cars.com commercial with him, so they knew he was playing this character in that movie. That was cool. And very fresh. Um, it's pretty rare too, even for um, Brian Robbins, though, because after Good Burger, yeah, I knew that he was going to come up with something that's even more, you know, adult oriented. Even though it is a teenager film, yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> but it had a lot of nudity in this movie, all right. I mean, besides the the whipped cream bikini uh, that Eileen Lauder's character had done. Um, they went to a strip club in the movie, yeah, where they actually spotted their sex education teacher actually stripping, you know, to the tune of, of Ben Halen's uh, Hot for Teacher. And lots of bad languages in, in an R-rated film. But it worked so well as it turned out that it's hard to believe that this was, this was part of his project long before he wound up doing all these Fred movies and all those other Eddie Murphy movies that he's been doing. Yeah, <laughs> some career he has been turning out to be. And it was a production by MTV, so MTV was really uh, coming up with something new. Along with Brian Robbins' producer, Mike Tolan, and all this. So it, it's really great. I, I really enjoy this. If you ever get a chance, definitely buy this movie on Blu ray, DVD. Or, but I, I definitely recommend getting the, this edition that came out uh, in 2009 because I only bought this for five bucks at Target and it was definitely worth the deal. Yeah, and it had tons of special features in this. The only exception though was that they were supposed to have deleted scenes of this movie along with um, an addition with Eileen Lauder that's not included sadly. Yeah, it, it would have worked so well with it. And I've also been amazed that this was celebrated its 15th anniversary for this film since it came out in January. So they worked pretty well for, for 15 years. <laughs> but it's definitely worth watching. So anyway, I give Barcy Blues 4 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.